Hey YouTube, Mr. Terry here with another History Teacher Reacts video. And today we're going to be looking at more memes. Everybody's favorite thing to do on the internet. All right, so how this works is over on our Discord server, there is a section for posting history memes. And what my mods do over there is pick some of the best ones and throw them into a folder for me to check out. And I look at these, I haven't seen them before. And I guess the general idea is I'll... Uh, Go over them with you if I if I know about them. Actually, there's a lot of questions I get sometimes from memes. I'm like, I don't know what that necessarily means. And you can help me out there by posting down in the comments. But I'll let you know what I think of them too. All right, if you're into memes, uh, maybe you want some history meme sort of related merch. Uh, we got some great designs uh, doing with history from our um, great arts, artist Hoisin, uh, like our blue shell to Berlin, which has been a famous shirt, still on sale actually down in Teespring. Uh, there's a link down below, as well as our Kaiser Wilhelm and uh, Franz Joseph one for World War I, uh, which is a good one too, and some other stuff. Check it out. Uh, there's a Teespring link down below. All right, and then, yeah, if you would like to submit memes for me to check out, definitely join our Discord server. There's a, a link down there, and you'll see a memes channel, and Love to see what you got there. It's a fun way to sometimes learn about history. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and blow this one up a little bit. All right, we got Holy Roman Empire. There are about 1,800 Germanic states within the empire. Napoleon, no, forget that. We're going to consolidate this down to 34 German states. Otto von Bismarck. Germany is Germany. <laughs> it's going to be yeah, later on. So the Holy Roman Empire is interesting because, yeah, it's a whole bunch of states. And there's that famous adage, you know, Voltaire and others said, which was the Holy Roman Empire is not really holy nor Roman nor an empire. And that's what they're talking about. There are so many states, again, and, you know, they're supposed to be part of an empire, but it's a pretty loose thing there. And um, Napoleon, he he uh, he actually abolished it. So Holy Roman Empire for about uh, existed for about a, th um, a thousand years, and he abolished it. And then um, Otto von Bismarck was famous for basically unifying yeah, Prussia and Germany, and unifying kind of the Germany that we more know uh, or know more of today. And that's the famous look with him with the. The, the, the great kind of ceremonial militaristic helmet with the spike on it, and then the classic mustache. <laughs> All right, good stuff there. Do people love Bismarck? People love Bismarck. And it's so interesting because I had never I never learned about Bismarck as someone growing up. But all of a sudden, it's like he's almost like a meme for now young his people into history. <laughs> all right, what do we got here? Let's go ahead and blow it up. A little more. Do the thing. When your job consists on protect the life of the emperor, but somehow you end up being the cause of death of 25% of the emperor. Praetorian guard. <laughs> you know, emperors, yeah, the, the, the biggest almost like threat to them in Rome, ancient Rome, was your own guard. You better make sure that they're loyal, but they can get paid off. Um, you can get disgruntled with them. And there's a time period right after the Pax Romana where they had, what, like 25 emperors in 50 years with like two of them dying of actual natural causes, which created so much instability. But yeah, it's like, it's, it's yeah, difficult because they're supposed to protect you, but they're also the ones close to you. And you can uh, definitely be at their mercy in a way. Nice. Praetor Praetorian guard <laughs> good stuff man if you're a roman emperor you always you always are up for attack potentially all right what do we got here oh it's a small one all right let's see if we can blow it up okay that's better bro give me my tribute hold on we gotta look okay we got this is the ottoman empire ottoman okay so it's okay so i see with the with the colors there um, Brogy, my tribute. Like, yeah. Okay, close your eyes. Yes. What do you see? Nothing. Well, that's your tribute. Oh, it's the trolls. <laughs> like, yeah, that's around. Uh, it's in the former kingdom, more in kind of what you consider the, the Middle Ages over there in Eastern Europe. Um, 
Yeah, you got to pay tribute. The tribute system, right? Ottoman Empire and others use that. I mean, it's just like a standard thing in empires is, hey, like, it's going to be hard to rule over you directly. So let's do this. You're going to pay us tribute and then we're going to leave you alone, meaning we'll be keeping an eye on you, though. <laughs> And, but yeah, so many so many nations use tribute systems uh, to do that. The Mongols did that. Uh, the Chinese did that. Um, they did that in with like the Aztec Empire, um, just a, a, a way to like grow an empire without having to directly administer over it. Because really, what they want in the end is the resources and money or military support from these areas um, is the most important thing. Nice. Wallachia. Also home of Dracula, right? All right, what do we got here? Oh, man, we got data. I analyzed 70 years of baby names in the U.S. to decide what to call a male Karen. It's Terry. Moving on. <laughs> Emperor Caligula. I will wage war on Neptune himself, my legions. Line the beaches and prepare. Every soldier in the empire. The eyes are open. The mouth moves. But Mr. Brain has long since departed. See, <laughs> this refers to this famous story. I got to look into more because I've only ever seen it in meme form. Which was that, yeah, Roman Emperor Carig Cal Cal Caligula wages war on Neptune. Neptune is the god of the sea. Uh, Greek counterpart uh, would be Poseidon, and they like, at least from the memes, it says they they went and stormed the beaches and like started stabbing the water with their swords. Like that would actually do something. I don't know it seems a little bit too fantastic for an actual thing to happen. I got I want to look more into what that actually is. If you got any good sources, you can let me know. Um, but that was always a funny thing if if that is even close to being true of something that actually happened there. But yeah, it wouldn't be a very smart thing, obviously. All right. Got some Persia going on here. The Aka EA. <laughs> oh, okay, EA. Achaemenid Empire. Achaemenid Empire is um, is Persia, the first major, the first Persian Empire, and EA getting all the crap because they do uh, their their video games are known for DLC. So you got okay, Cyrus the Great. His expansion pack, he's basically the founder of the Empire. And then the Persian pack, free. Mudra DLC, $525. Aesthetic Borders pack. That's awesome. <laughs> Akem Kiem Empire. That's great. Yeah, it's like it's like, yeah, it is kind of like when they expand the empires. It's like DLC, like IRL DLC. How's it going on like that? All right, we got something SpongeBobish. Antioch, West Antioch, Crochet opening. Oh, I can't see close enough. Whoa, okay, that's too much. All right, so Antioch is in um, in the Levant, in the the Middle East, kind of. Eastern Mediterranean there, West Antioch, Rosso. Oh, except for down the old one, and then there's a brand new one. Um, you guys can help explain this one in a little more detail than I can. Um, but yeah, you get... I mean, Antioch, just going back in history, was part of like the holy cities, supposedly, of Christianity that way. And was also a key part of the Crusades. Um, as one of the places that the Crusaders whatever they they try to get um, because down further south eventually will be Jerusalem it's one of like the first cities of the the holy land if you want to call that nice all right moving on what we got okay all right let's go up real fact 1470 of the 193 members of the United Nations Britain has invaded 171 to them <laughs> the British, yes, <laughs> biggest empire in the world, right? 
So of 193 members, there's 193 members of the UN. Britain has invaded 171 of them. I want to see a list. I want to see a list of all of that. I mean, not that I would be surprised because they're going to create the biggest empire in the world, 17 and 1800s. But yeah, it's like we don't. Even the British, like we don't, we don't talk about that anymore. Okay, that was that was older times. Let's let's move on. Okay, we have a United Nations. We're supposed to come together now. Nice. What a oh, it's Snapple. Okay. Nice. Is Snapple big in the UK? If you're if you're if you're in Britain or England or anywhere around there, can you can you drink this? What's what's the response? Probably proud of it. Ottoman Empire. Poland, <laughs> the winged hussars. <laughs> so the siege of Vienna is a is a pretty is a is a pretty big thing in history where it's the um, the Ottoman Empire's attempt to invade into Central Europe because they had the Balkans area and much of uh, Eastern Europe, and uh, Vienna was being yeah, sieged against by the Ottoman Empire, and the Polish came in, and that's where you get that famous story the the winged hussars, which were these this cavalry that had these uh large wings like coming out of the uh of the back of the of the um of the soldier and that's where you have the baby here is the wings of the pigeon in the back that's kind of like that and the big thing was that the winged hussars came in and like uh, turned the tide of the battle um and it ends up being um a a loss for the ottoman empire and ended up kind of marking the extent of the ottoman empire westward into um into europe all right, what we got here? Uh oh, lewd. Persia making out with Islam. Oh no, Zoroastrians. Yeah. <laughs> so Persia was, or Zoroastrianism, was the major religion for much of Persian history, like back in the Achaemenid Empire, and then in the kind of seventh and then the eighth centuries, uh, with the kind of the um, the Arab kind of invasion into Persia. That brought Islam, and Islam will become the dominant religion. And Zoroastrianism won't go away, but it'll be a tiny little minority. So Persia kind of took its, you know, focus off of Zoroastrianism, become, becomes largely Islamic. And I guess the Zoroastrians are kind of the, the awkward third wheel for the religions of the, the, the new Persia, the Islamic Persia. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Nuclear annihilation. Blew it up. Nuclear annihilation. Nuclear annihilation. <laughs> we zoom out a little bit. So yeah, we got. It's kind of interesting with this because it's like World War Two, right? World War Two. Atomic bombs are used, and it looks like the future of warfare is going to be nuclear annihilation. Of course, of course, it gets to this point when the United States and Soviet Union and other nations will get involved, but. We'll start building up these huge arsenals of atomic weapons. And what was what a lot of people say was keeping people from using them anymore was the fact that now other people had them. When the United States used atomic weapons in World War II on Japan, nobody else had that. So there was nothing to counter that. But then pretty quickly with the Cold War, 1949, the Soviet Union started developing atomic weapons. And it was like the threat of a nuclear annihilation prevented nuclear annihilation and i think that's what the meme is trying to go is trying to going for there because this idea that if you used nuclear weapons on someone you know it would get used back on you and then you just end up annihilating each other right this this idea of mad mad mutually assured destruction so it's like our nuclear weapon weapons keeping the world more peaceful because we haven't had anything to the scale of a world war ii interesting thought that's a thought I like to talk about in my uh, in my class and have have a discussion about. Okay. I love the DiCaprio like laughing meme. Germany, boy, this telegram sure is important. I hope nobody intercepts it. <laughs> Britain. <laughs> okay, so this is the Zimmerman telegram. In World War One, Germany was looking to get some support or backup alliance, whatever you want to call that, from Mexico. Because Germany was afraid the United States would join the war, and they end up selling a tel uh, sending a telegram. Um, Arthur Zimmerman, the the uh, he was in charge of foreign policy, right, in Germany, and sent this 
letter through the telegraph lines over the Atlantic to the German ambassador in in New Mexico. And essentially what this letter said was, hey, Mexico, um, if you can kind of side with us in a way, especially if the United States kind of gets involved, uh, we'll support you back. You know, uh, we'll help you regain lost territory that you lost to the United States in the Spanish-American War. Uh, or sorry, Mexican-American War, um, southwestern United States areas, um, in turn for your support. Now, the British had basically been tapping and spying and pretty much every telegram coming across the Atlantic. And they intercepted this and then promptly gave it to the, uh, presented it to the United States to, of course, piss them off because um, the Allies would have loved to get American support at this time in the war because the war was going very badly um, on both fronts. So this was one of the things that was one of a few things that uh, slowly eventually led to the United States actually joining the war because it incensed people that Germany would try to provoke a nation like Mexico, a neighbor of the United States, to, you know, to, uh, yeah, to provoke them. So, by the way, people would always ask me, did, uh, how did Mexico respond to it? And they were never interested in actually making this deal. But the near, just the mere idea that Germany would attempt such a thing was something the Americans found highly uh, um, offensive. But yet, so, yeah, the British intercepted it. I'm sure the Americans like, wait, are you spying on our telegrams? The Britain's like, ah, don't, don't worry about it. Don't just, just read this. Just shut up and read this. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Some Middle Age type stuff. Blow it up. Wait, tis earth is round. Always hath been. Okay. I'm trying to, trying to get, why is the dude with the arrow always had to wait tis earth is round. I mean, I, I think I get what they're saying as far as like, I mean, I know the history of what people thought of the, the um, cosmology, the, the earth and the solar system, I'm trying to get what the shooting down is. So the earliest experiments for that we have a lot of record of for testing the shape of the earth um, you can go back to ancient Greece with Eratosthenes, who performed an experiment that showed not only curvature, but actually was able to calculate the size of the Earth. So that idea of a round Earth was um, not new and was commonly held um, for a long time, even through the Middle Ages, uh, which, for whatever reason, became something in pop culture where people were saying that it wasn't until Christopher Columbus's voyage that they found the Earth was round. That wasn't true at all. Colum Columbus knew the Earth was round. Everybody knew the Earth was round there. Uh, the big thing with Columbus was he underestimated the size of the Earth. He he actually was pretty bad at the calculations because everyone was telling him, no, the Earth's way bigger than you think, and got saved basically by the fact that the Earth ended up being smaller. Um, actually, not the Earth uh, ended up being bigger, but I mean that the uh, there ended up being continents in the way, otherwise they would have never made it. So what ends up happening in the Middle Ages, though, and then into what we call the scientific, revol um, scientific revolution was the work and kind of step steps towards the process of um, having more proof towards a heliocentric solar system. OK, because the, the, the sphericity was already um, had already been confirmed was um, people like uh, Copernicus and Kepler and Tuco Brahe, and then, of course, kind of finalizing it with uh, Galileo, who kind of published those findings and with, with observations. So, anyway, good stuff. History of astronomy is a great one. Great thing to study. Oh, no, is this me? Okay, is this my coming back video after my move when I was gone for like three weeks? That's right, I came in. Napoleon, I'm back. <laughs> okay, so in reference to um, Napoleon, who was exiled um, to Elba, uh, the island out in the Mediterranean, and then he escapes and then comes back to reunite kind of the, the, the French military and then to basically wage war again and then loses again, gets gets uh, exiled even further down to St. Helena down in the Pacific, so... Are you guys trying to say I'm Napoleon? I, I'm nowhere near that. You can see how much my, my uh, office has already changed. Uh, if you notice, the my walls are painted. Uh, painted my walls. Got rid of the beige. And also took down the shelves. Because I was actually thinking, by the way, I would 
put uh, put shelves in a different spot right above these arcade cabinets. So like floating shelves along the side. I guess we could talk about that real quick here. So like, not my head here, but there'd be a line right here above the arcade cabinets of shelves kind of like those ones that you saw in the image and then put my my cool history stuff there so it's an ever evolving studio thing here and we could talk about that and show you guys some more stuff later on so you should see some stuff changing in my background there all right but all right looks like i'm napoleon now okay what else, what else we got here why is hyena doing this kosro or uh, Kosrao stuff. It is. Don't you have anything else? Oh, you made them. Oh, this was made by you. Oh, they're all credited. Or some of them are credited. Some of my mods actually credited who submitted these. I didn't really share that. Marshall Otis did the last one. Oh, and Hyena made this. Alright, let's blow it up. Right. Oh, you're approaching me? Oh no, we got anime. History and anime. Happy weeb noises. So instead of running away, you're coming right to me. Oh, sorry, yes. I can't beat the out of you without getting closer. Oh no, then come as close as you like. Sorry, no weeb, no weebs allowed. Just kidding. No good stuff. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we got. Humiliating the two most powerful nations of the 20th century, Vietnam and Finland. This is great. I mean, it's more than that though. Vietnam also defeated the French. Uh, in the 50s, after World War II, when uh, they were looking for independence from being a French colony. So Vietnam was, uh, at least when you're talking about <clears throat> uh, Vietnam at first as a whole, and then with North Vietnam uh, defeating the United States, and then Finland, who was able to defend itself against the Soviet Union. So you got the two superpowers of the Cold War era, and Vietnam was able to defend itself against both. So there you go. Bam. That's like the bro, the bro high five. Next time you do that, if it's your homies, do it like that. I don't care if you're a boy or a girl. Boom. We need to make that more of a thing. Not this, you know, hand slaps and stuff. Look, bam. Right? Like over the top. Old great 80s movie. All right. Let's get a couple more in. All right. Is this some Churchill and FDR? Okay, what do we got? We did it, Franklin. We saved Poland. <laughs> Except then the Soviet Union went and took it over. So, yeah. It's like, I mean, I don't know why they would say that because they never saved Poland. Poland got taken over by um, uh, never able to help Poland when Poland got invaded by Nazi Germany. And then also by the Soviet Union, it got taken over and ended up being split apart. Um, in the old ways that it was kind of before the creation of Poland after World War One, or at least that that iteration of Poland. But then, when the Soviet Union, or sorry, when uh, Nazi Germany was defeated, um, Soviet Union basically stayed part of it as it became part of the uh, the Soviet Union in a way, or at least kind of an extension of it, or at least uh, you know what happened with the Soviet Union was they kind of became puppet states behind what Churchill called the Iron Curtain. So. There you go. Poor Poland, man. History of being a tug of war of East and West. Oh, we got pizza? What we got? If you guys know, I'm always talking about pizza. Sorry, you, uh, zoom out so you can see. Okay. It says, did you get your Pizza Hut pizza? This is Gorbachev. Yes. What did it cost? everything <laughs> so a famous thing was after so um gorbachev was the last leader of the soviet union and he had done some policies glasnost and perestroika that ended up kind of dismantling some core fundamental 
traditions of the Soviet Union, um, opening it up at more, uh, reducing censorship, giving them more economic freedoms and stuff like that. And he ended up being the last one because after that you get Boris Yeltsin and then the the um, becomes the first president of the Russian Federation, if you will, and the um, Soviet Union be abolished. And one of the famous things was after that. Pizza Hut, you know, an American brand, um, ended up expanding into into Russia, and um, Gorbachev famously did a commercial for them, and it's a pretty good one. Check it out. I, I, I like to show it in my classes sometimes, where you have this you have this like older guy and then a younger guy, and they're sitting there debating about kind of the new Russia, or the young guy's like, we have more freedom now, and then the older guy, the old traditional guy's like, we have now we have chaos and instability. And he's like, well, and then they both are like, well, at least we have now have Pizza Hut. And then Gorbachev's in the back, like mm, eating pizza. It's it's a pretty good one, but it, it just it shows how far basically Russia and the former former Soviet Union had come that you'd even have something like this, this like American capitalist thing, right entity like Pizza Hut, and then a former communist leader doing an advertisement for him. So it's pretty uh. I like to say it was like good evidence that the Cold War is basically over. It's like, would you have seen that in the Stalin era? Yeah, no. Or the Khrushchev era? No. All right. We got some uh, messed up looking Pikachu here. Habsburg mom. Son, it's time you know the truth. Your daddy is also your uncle. Habsburg son. <laughs> so the Habsburgs were this family that married into a whole bunch of royal families across Europe. And what they were supposedly known for, what they were known for, was also basically inbreeding and marrying within your own family. Which led them to have some kind of peculiar looking faces, especially with the jaws. And people say that was, that was a result of the incestuousness of the, of the family there. And I guess that's what's going there with the... Kind of messed up looking Pikachu. All right, we'll do a couple more. Approaching about almost half an hour here. Okay, what do we got here? It's always using Sponge. There's always so many SpongeBob memes. All right, 50 nukes will win the Korean War. General MacArthur, President Truman. Yeah, so Gen General MacArthur... Um, Douglas MacArthur was the uh, in charge of the military in the Pacific during the uh, during World War II for the United States. And when the war was over, MacArthur was like, "Let's keep going." So they were saying, "Hey, let's nuke. You know, let's start using it. We use it in Japan. Let's use it in the Korean War. Shoot, let's use it on uh, like China and stuff." President Truman was like, "Dude, like." Stop. He actually ended up firing him, which was quite a debate in history because a lot of people were like, General MacArthur's this, uh, this, you know, American patriot. He's a war hero, and like he, they like his aggressive stance. But President Truman's like, dude, you're going to destroy the world. <laughs> this is the era now where, like, others have, you know, because it's the Cold War, the Soviet Union also has it, and they're going to back up their states. So I was like, all right, that, that's enough. Okay, that's a little bit too far, and ends up firing MacArthur, actually. Okay. So we got, okay, World War One. we got the trenches. Um, what you got there? A smoothie. I don't understand this context. I don't understand it. Someone explain. Why is he, who is this guy? And why are these two girls here? Is this like a, like Disney Channel stuff? Who did this? Ishii? I know you're talking about. <laughs> All right. I love office ones from the office. Andy Bernard. These artifacts are amazing. How did you manage to get so many? The British Museum. I, I stole it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. In the British Imperial era, you know, big thing they did was archaeology in a lot of places and ended up taking all these priceless culturally significant artifacts like for Egypt example and going taking them back to the British Museum would be their their uh into the, yeah into uh, it's now into their possession you know but people say you know there aren't the British just modern grave robbers in a way not wrong right all right 
We're gonna do one more. This is the last one of the night for today. It's got cats. Oh, shoot, what do we got here? Zoom out. Cats in the Middle Ages. Hardworking. Went to, went to church. Walked on hind legs. Contributed to society. Cats now. Lazy and ungrateful. Atheist too lazy to walk on hind legs. <laughs> Uh, cats were really important in, in, you know, cultures, especially like the middle ages. A lot of it was chasing off mice. Mice were such a big deal as you know, like, uh, a, a big reason why the plague spread into Europe was fleas on mice. And, but yeah, cats had a, a responsibility because they had to help protect your farmland from critters and stuff like that. But it looks like in this, this picture, whoever did this, yeah, they made, um, you know, hard work. Yeah. Hardworking. Apparently they're going to church. They walked on their hind legs, so they're like walking straight up. Contributed to sight, and then cats now are just like, Bleh. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. All right, you guys, we're gonna end it here. There are more memes for me to check out, so we can definitely do another meme video in the uh, not so distant future. If you want to contribute to history memes for us, um, again, join our Discord server. There's a link down below. You'll see a place for uh, memes. Uh, just make sure they're historically relevant and uh, at least within some mild appropriateness of what I can share in an educational setting, that kind of thing. Just think, would you show it in a classroom for the most part? Um, I got to stick to those guidelines, but I'd love to see it more. And hopefully one thing with memes is first off, never trust a meme for historical accuracy. They very rarely are accurate. But what it can do, and it just happens to me sometimes, is get you interested in learning more about something. It's like all of a sudden you want to learn about the role of cats more like we just saw. So go look into that. Or like I was saying before, Caligula's war against Neptune, right? Like the look into things more. Um, so don't use them as an educational tool, but more as a peaking interest tool. That's my uh, teacher speak for you there today. All right. Anyways, on the way out, if you want some fun history related stuff kind of like this, so you can wear on some shirts, um, definitely check out the Teespring account. It is down below. You'll see a link there. If you're into video games, check out my gaming channel. It's also linked down below. Do some live streams, some other fun things there. And uh, catch up with you guys next time.